Welcome to DEF CON Safe Mode. I'm the Dark Tangent. I'll be your host, along with hundreds and hundreds of other goons, contest organizers, village organizers, and other creatives, trying to build you a virtual experience for a replacement for <laughs> missing Las Vegas. <sighs> Far from Las Vegas, I'm in Singapore, where I've been stuck since February. So I really am coming at you from the other side of the planet. Recording this just in case the live connection doesn't work. So hopefully I'll be at the end of this recording uh, available for questions and answers, but if it doesn't work out, sorry, we tried our best. So this is the part of DEF CON where normally I talk a little bit about the history of the con, uh, what can be expected for the new year, some cool surprises, uh, how to get the most out of it. But really, honestly, I don't really know what to tell you a whole lot besides we're online. It's new, exciting. The theme this year is discovery. Our color palette are these nice bright pastel colors and we're trying to evoke sort of a sense of wonder, discovery, new exploration, and there's gonna certainly be a lot of that this weekend. Um, if you look at what the villages are doing uh, contests and events, so many different platforms online. We're really stress testing uh, this environment to see what an online community like ours would be like. So I'm really kind of excited to do this and I'm really terrified at the same time because this is a lot of skills that uh, we don't exercise in Vegas. You know, we're all about real life and in person, face to face. And this is at a distance with keyboards and video chat and memes. Um, so I've been watching everybody on the line con for the last week and some great conversations are happening. I just don't know what's gonna happen when we go live. So I hope to see you out there. So let me talk a little bit about um, the decision to go live uh, with Discord and a new platform for us. So when I decided to cancel the in-person I mean, it was, if you read my post, it was pretty clear nothing was gonna happen in the States. And we've been totally, totally borne out that that was the right decision. I mean, everything's canceled in the States forever, as far as I can tell. So online it is, it's gonna be online for a while. So we quickly had to discover how could we do this? And we made a post on forum.defcon.org, talk about a whole lot of different platforms. Do we want to do VR with cartoon-like characters? Do we want to build a world? Do we want to have it text only? In the end, it was pretty much down to Riot, which has been renamed now, and Discord. And we went with Discord because it had a longer history. Uh, gamers are pretty abusive, and so their platform has been beaten up quite a bit, and they've got some pretty good moderation uh, and server stability uh, experience. And it was pretty extensible. A lot of people have built stuff on top of Discord. So here we are. Now, in the last three months, uh, Riverside, some of the guys from Wall of Sheep, some of the DEF CON crew and others have pulled together and really in three months, two months, done about a year's worth of work building this Discord server that you're now on. Um, please be gentle. Uh, we're in beta. <laughs> this is like Google beta, I guess. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of different things to explore here. And I'm just gonna give you a quick overview and then we're gonna move on to talk about some of the cool things happening with the show. So first off with Discord, anybody can report an issue. Everybody on the platform has to comply with the DEF CON code of conduct. And because we're guests on Discord's platform, we also have to comply with the Discord's code of conduct. And there's reporting tools. Uh, you can file a report or a ticket as we call it and get a goon to help. Uh, if you see a goon in red there on the right-hand side, you can uh, message them and ask them for help. And then also there's a uh, Discord moderation that can help. And if you have any questions during operating hours, just go and ask the info booth. They're there to help. They're at the top in the upper left-hand of your channel selection. And once you learn a couple of tricks like Control K to jump to channels, you should start zooming around and, and it'll feel uh, more comfortable. Um, so, we're trying something new this year. We're taking all of the talks, all of the videos of the talks, the presentations, PDFs, the music, album, everything, the original soundtrack, and we're dumping it all at once 
uh, on Wednesday. So by the time you've seen this, Thursday or Friday, I don't even know when we're playing this right now, when you, by the time you see this, all the videos, all the speeches, everything will become available. We've never done that before because we've never had the speeches in, uh, ahead of time. And what we're hoping to do is allow you to time shift. There's a lot of other villages and content that aren't doing that. Um, they're going live. And we thought, well, if they're going live, maybe we go pre-recorded and give you some more options to watch uh, however you want. And then what we are doing live, our big risky maneuver, is every day, all day, from Thursday to Saturday, Sunday, we're having Q&A sessions. So if you see a talk that you like and you want to in interact with a speaker, you get a half an hour every day on each talk. So just go to the defcon.org website, look at the schedule, you'll see when the Q&As uh, are happening. Uh, so you'll also notice at the end of the day, we're operating in Pacific time zone, UTC minus seven, for those of you not familiar with um, Americanisms. Um, we close a lot of the rooms at night, and this is because we don't want to burn out our moderators and our goons waiting around in rooms where nobody's participating. So you'll see a lot of rooms lock at night. You might see some with a tag that say closed. You might see some disappear, depending upon how they're closing their room. But in the end, they'll pop back up the next day uh, during, during normal hours, uh, Pacific time. So yeah, pretty, pretty excited about this. I've got my refrigerator stocked, I've got my caffeine, I've got my stimulants and my alcohol depressants, depending upon what situation uh, presents itself. We're recording and capturing as much as we can. Uh, a lot of the villages and contests are uh, recording as well on Twitch or YouTube. And so after the con, we'll start gathering all of this video and content and results and we'll start sharing it with the community. So. If you miss something, hopefully, maybe it'll have gotten captured and you'll be able to see it after the fact. And, uh, and for those of you who uh, became Human Pluses to help support us on the server with a little bit of money, that's really appreciated. Uh, we've never done a free event because there's always costs, but this year it was such a special occasion, DEF CON is canceled, that I really wanted to give something back to the community. We're all uh, in a pretty stressful place with COVID, I mean, everybody has somebody that has been impacted by it. And anyway, I just wanted to uh, make everything open to our community and make this sort of a time of celebration and discovery, get us connected one way or the other because we can't see each other in person in Vegas. So uh, yeah, so this is, this is the best I can do and I, I hope it's enough. Now, bring you closer together and make new friends we always have contests. And one of the contests this year was the badge contest. So if you purchased a badge, which was a cassette tape, which was kind of a play on the last time the Lost Boy did a badge for us, it was a record, if you remember that. Um, <laughs> but encoded on the audio and in the program, uh, liner notes and in the lanyard, there were clues and hints. And this is really meant to be a challenge for you to explore before the con. And then during the con, Lost is deploying one of his super famous mystery challenges. This is a full-blown mystery challenge. So things that were on the badge, badge challenge, don't get them confused with things you're going to see on the forums, which is the mystery challenge. And Lost is primarily going to perform the mystery challenge contest on forum.defcon.org. But I'd like to introduce him next so he can tell you all about the craziness of making the cassette badge at the last possible minute, putting in a puzzle, getting the audio encoded, um, and then building a mystery challenge and what he's trying to get um, you to do an experience for this show. So if you don't know Lost, he's a long time super contributor to DEF CON, uh, sort of a jack of all trades. I think he's been everything you can be from a school teacher to a linguist to a police officer. Uh, to super computer hacker, to cryptographer. To, he's kind of done a little bit of everything. I'm very envious of his skill set. But he also has a great inquisitive mind and is uh, very detail oriented when he gets into, the, into music and puzzles. And so um, hopefully you've experienced some of his puzzles in the past. And if you haven't, hey, this is a great chance for you to get involved. 
uh, and, and start either at the ground floor with the, the badge challenge. I mentioned the badge challenge. If you don't have a badge, that's okay. All the materials are online uh, for free on the DEF CON media server, media.defcon.org. So you can still play along, you just won't have the physical item, but you'll have all the audio files. Anyway, I'm distracted. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Lost Boy, if you haven't met him before, and take it away, virtual Lost Boy. Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Welcome to DEF CON Safe Mode. I hope everybody is doing well in spite of these challenging times. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank DT for letting us even have a badge and making that happen and making that possible in spite of the fact that we're in the uh, the wonderful COVID times that we are. Um, I'd like to also thank Neil and Nikita and Darrington for the help uh, that they put forth on the making sure that the, the badge happened as well as to Nelly Bot uh, for the assistance on the, the lanyard artwork as well. For those of you who are working on the puzzle or recognize that there is a puzzle in the lanyard, uh, obviously you've been focusing on that there. The only recommendation or, or hint I could give at this point in time would be to shave a little closer with Occam's razor. Uh, don't overcomplicate things. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Some people have already figured out quite a few clever things. I would recommend that you check out the forums uh, or talk to some folks in some of the chat uh, rooms here on the Discord for that. So recently, as you can probably see from around me, I've been really into uh, music and synthesizers, such as this record here, the Happy Moog, and it is Moog, it's not Moog. There's a modular synthesizer there. It seems that... Uh, Synthesizers in the hacker community have that Venn diagram tends to overlap quite a bit. Same thing with electronics and those that are that are building things. I mean, clear back when we had folks like Forrest Mims giving us Radio Shack books and showing us how to build electronic music instruments. So along with that, during uh, my earlier years, one of the things that uh, always meant a lot and was a demonstration of a lot of thought and emotion behind it was the concept of the mixtape, um, which I think the younger generation just won't have a need to understand because you carry all of your music around with you on your phone or you have access to it or you stream it. But uh, back in the day, you used to have to sit and listen to the radio for hours and then tape your uh, your favorite songs uh, in order to, to get them. Uh, so you could listen to them you know, when you wanted to. And the cassette tape was the medium that tended to follow right after LPs and records. And uh, there were other tape technologies, such as the 8-track, which was a continuous loop tape, which is very interesting if you don't know how an 8-track works. The tape is wound around a single spool and is fed actually from the middle, goes around the roller and the tensioner, and then gets wrapped back around the outside, and it's self-tensioning. That's why an 8-track tape doesn't have any access to to the, the winders or the rollers. I've already seen several people making reference in the forums and on Twitter about uh, if you know the, the, con the relationship between a cassette tape and a pencil. Uh, for the younger generation, that's because when the tape would get caught up or not be uh, tensioned properly, you'd shove a pencil through here and use it to, to wind the tape or spin it. Uh, this is, by the way, one of the original test tapes for the DEF CON uh, tape. This isn't the master, but it is uh, one of the original test tapes. You can see the clear shell there. Um, one of the early Goon prototype tapes. Experimenting with different colors. There's the red one. This one, if you notice, has no tape in it at the time. This is just a shell. And the spools, the spindles, have the clear take-up tape, which is connected. And so what the manufacturer will do is they'll come in and they'll they'll splice that and they'll splice the other tape to it and then wind it up. And that's how these are made. The shells for the DEF CON badge this year came from uh, Italy. And they were the tapes themselves were fabricated and recorded in here in the United States on the East Coast, actually. So um, what I was starting to say earlier was the mixtape. You made mixtapes for friends or... Um, 
you know, friends or family or whoever that showed that uh, you went to the effort. Not only the order of the songs was important and the emotion behind why certain songs were chosen. I mean, some mixtapes were like somebody were dating. Sometimes it was a romantic gesture, like, look, I spent all this time focused. And the thought behind it is, uh, I was thinking about you the whole time that I made this thing. And oftentimes it would be handwritten on there because it would be a blank tape that was recorded on, on home equipment. And, and there were actually... Uh, Sticky. So we all now have the, you wouldn't download a house. Well, back then they used to have uh, advertisements be like, tapes are killing the music industry, which it hasn't. Uh, even the original Pirate Bay uh, logo, uh, you've, you've all seen like the cassette tape with the crossbones because the tape was really the first medium that allowed us to tape, to t- allowed us to record our music and create bootlegs, for example. Is about the same time you then you started having uh, videotapes as well, but it gave people an, an a- opportunity to preserve music and, and have music. And as we can see, it didn't kill the record industry, uh, unfortunately. I have my own thoughts on that. Uh, the orig- the uh, human badges this year are the purple color tape there that you can see. We also made two other colors, the, uh, the artist's. Uh, I'll got copies in in yellow. It's kind of a neon yellow. I like that color. And all of the goons got a solid red tape. So the red tapes are actually very rare because, you know, we only made enough for the goons. Same thing with the artist tapes. The the intent was, you know, people are going to be at home. They're not going to, we didn't think, sit and wear them around their neck as, as a lanyard. But one of the things I wanted to do, and I talked with uh, with DT about it, is I want to have kind of a mini contest that we're announcing right now, which hasn't gone public except for when someone on Twitter kind of forced my hand. Um, we're looking for the most creative way that someone attaches their tape to their lanyard, whether that's 3D printing, sculpting, action figure, clay model, electronics pick a thing um i'm going to be talking in the badge forum about where you can send uh pictures or video submission about what you've done to me and myself and dt and a couple other people will vote and we'll see who we think the most creative uh badge holder creator is bonus points if you make it in such a way that can be copied by other people uh, points for creativity, things like that. But it's kind of a mini contest that I wanted to do live that I didn't want to start until DEF CON actually started. Uh, some other interesting facts about the tapes. So when I was talking to the fabricator, which, by the way, is the same house that does the tapes for places like Disney, which I thought was interesting, and then I started thinking about it, and, well, no, there aren't that many tape fabrication houses anymore. So those that have the capacity to do a large run and do a professional quality run are limited these days. So it made sense that we wound up at somebody who would do something like tapes for Disney or for, you know, we kind of have a resurgence. There's a resurgence in like 80s pop culture interest lately in music too, although certain genres of music have been around for a while. Uh, Groups like Gunship seem to become, have become more popular recently. And kudos to them. After a live stream that I did, I do a, a, a live stream once a week where I talk about music, science, and hacking. Um, immediately following that stream, and I'd like to think I influenced it, although probably not, uh, Gunship announced that you can use any of their music on live streams without worried about being worried about copyright. So kudos to them. They understand the next generation. But uh, the tape, when it's being fabricated, goes through the machine at... 60 miles an hour. Think about that. It's faster than most like most cars on the freeway when the freeway's jammed up. And the if you think about the acceleration and deceleration for how fragile the tape itself is to say that it's going at 60 miles an hour is pretty impressive. You think about how that what that machine must uh, be a, capable of doing. The other thing is that there is a 6 hertz tone that they use to tell where the brakes in the tape should be as opposed to like the eight track 
who uses an actual piece that is spliced onto the tape. And unlike splicing of audio tape where you would do it on the back because you wouldn't want it to go over the reed head, uh, on an 8-track it actually faces the reed head, which I also find interesting. I keep mentioning 8-track tapes because I don't want to show them yet, but the, the, the Uber badge for this year is based on an 8-track tape. So there will be very, very few of those that uh, DT will be giving out at closing ceremonies to uh, to winners of contests. But uh, we made even fewer than we normally do uh, just because of the nature of where we're at in terms of COVID and everything else. But I wanted the tape to be something to be representative of thinking of friends, missing friends, wishing we were together. and uh, But instead of focusing on that negative aspect of that, something that brings people together. Uh, the contest side, the badge challenge, which uh, for those of you who are new to DEF CON, there are often puzzle, crypto, slash pop culture, slash pick a subject. I've probably ventured into it at least a little bit. Uh, puzzle challenges that are involved. And some are relatively easy and some are incredibly difficult. And the range goes all the way from Badge Challenge up through Mystery Challenge, which is a separate contest. Um, this year, specifically, if you get to a certain point, uh, I was going to show you just the splash screen of a particular website that you will eventually get to. Uh, if you... If you... So if, if you happen to hit that, uh, that website, you're on the right track. And you'll, so you'll know that you're, you're doing something right. Uh, if you were looking for other people to play the game with, try the DEF CON forums. Or um, we will have some Discord channels that will be discussing uh, Badge Challenge. And uh, that might be a place to find other people that you can connect with even remotely to work on the puzzles together. Yeah, I kind of like the crossword puzzles from the New York Times, right? I always wanted to solve and finish one of those. But again, I'd like to say uh, thanks to, uh, to DT for letting this happen. I mean, recently in my life, I've started being really interested in music. I mean, recently, past like five years or so, I've started carrying around uh, one of these guys with me. This is a Zoom recorder. You'll notice the XY recording head in there. I, I've been carrying one of these around with me pretty much everywhere I go. And when I hear interesting sounds or um, things out in the wild, uh, I've been recording them and incorporating them into some music and things that I've been making. Uh, maybe someday I'll start releasing things. I don't know. But uh, again, uh, thank you for coming to DEF CON Safe Mode. We hope that we can connect with everybody uh, the best we can in these trying times and let's try and have some fun and focus on some positive for a little while i think we could all use it uh, so now back to you jeff so if all went well we're done with the uh, intro we're going to move on now to the question and answer session live if i'm still here and loss is still here you should see us uh popping up any minute in discord in the chat and uh, we're ready to take any of your questions on uh, community history, why we're doing what we're doing, um, how you can get more out of the show, and uh, really looking forward to seeing everybody, and uh, thanks a lot for being here.